kabla ya hapo ningependa kuwaeleza ya kwamba tuko na chair of the Kisumu Revenue Board Dr. Hazel Makobewa karibu sana asante tuko hapa na directors I would like to ask all of you to be upstanding you want to recognize you directors Well, I know they are there. Thank you so much, uh, Banakabon. I know Bob Madani is a director, he's not standing, but maybe he's away, I'm a talker. Chief Officers, Tafarali. Asante Nisana, we have them there. Asante Nisana, Public Service, Education, uh, Roads, all of them are there. I would like to ask the county cabinet members to kindly come forward, Arakaraka. We just say our names. Na ile idara ambayo tunasimamia alafu tuachie gavana aelekeze ah amani na county secretary My name is Judy Kamwach and I'm the CC in charge of public service county administration and participatory development I am also the acting county secretary. Thank you. My name is Nguyen Nguyen Nguyen. I am Dr. Gregory Ganda, county executive committee member for medical services, public health and sanitation. Happy Mashuja Day and UHC celebration day. Thank you. Oh, my name is John Awichi, county executive committee member charge of education, technical training, innovation, and social services. Happy Master Day to the governor of your team and the county commissioner of your team, all protocol of staff. My name is Salmo Rimba, CEC member in charge of roads, transport, public works, and energy. Happy Mazuriyadeh. 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 Happy Allow me to begin by congratulating my friend, Mr. Hussain, for his appointment as a substantive county commissioner for this great county. Mr. Hussain has done a great job for the time he has been acting in that position. Under his leadership, we have had a very productive relationship between the county and the national government. We have especially witnessed this during the county disaster management meetings, which I co-chair with him. The constitution of the Republic of Kenya says very clearly that we have two types of governments in the Republic of Kenya. The national and the 47 devolved governments called counties, which are separate but interdependent. At the Council of Governors, we say we have 48 governments, one nation, 46, 47 county governments, and one national government, but one nation. Secondly, I would like to thank His Excellency, the President, William Sumiru, for re-engineering the universal healthcare system. As a minister for medical services in the coalition government, I strongly advocated for universal healthcare. In fact, I pressed for the name of the National Postal Insurance Fund to be changed to the National Health Insurance Fund. Because I don't think an insurance fund you insure hostels, but you insure people. That was successful, but our pressure 
to revolutionize the health system, especially our proposal that contributions to the National Health Insurance Fund should be based on the principle from each according to his ability to each according to his need. This indeed is what President Altao proposed. And I must thank you for finally implementing this overdue method of raising funds from the people for the universal health care system. I know when I proposed it, I was opposed, particularly by the Federation of Kenya Employers and Central Organization of Trade Unit. When I gave you example, for example, that I, who are a minister who can afford to pay 2,500 shillings for one meal in Serena, should pay even 5,000 shillings because that is something I can afford. And less and, and let the less endowed people contribute according to their ability. I remember I told him, uh, revoking, what do you say? Uh, attacking me and said that please don't tell us what you spend at the end. My interest is to defend the workers. I don't think defending the workers means them not contributing to this system according to their ability. We also carried out universal health care experiment in Kisumu during the whole government. We were four counties, Isiolo, Nyeri, Machakos, and Kisumu. We were meant to carry out UHC for one year so that the government can see how far we can go. Not much resources were given to this experiment. We in Kisumu went ahead and chairman and chairman of health committee of the Council of Governors. I did recommend radical changes. But, but nobody, nobody would listen then. then. I must say that here in Kisumu we went ahead to implement our own version of universal health care to Kirwa, to Marwa system, and reinforcing and supporting community health workers. Calling them our health volunteers to me was assuming too much generosity. We made them workers, we paid them a salary every month, we capacitated, capacitated them with equipment and knowledge, and their responsibility was to take care of family health, preventive health, and community health. And indeed, as the county commissioner said, if you want to make health less expensive, invest in family health, preventive health, and community health. Then the cost of health in the higher up peripheral facilities will be less because from down we will not get too many patients. The community health workers will have played a great deal of, of their contribution in promoting knowledge about preventive health care, family health care, and community health care. And therefore, I'd like to thank the President for finally biting the bullet, proposing the universal health care the revolution in the National Health Insurance Fund to be a national health system that is not encumbered by bureaucracy. The abolition of NHIF and the introduction of three institutions to do this work is welcome to my heart. And I hope corruption and bureaucracy will not destroy their vision and their aim. On a day like this, ladies and gentlemen, 71 years ago, Kenyans woke up to terrifying news. The colonial government had declared a state of emergency in a well-orchestrated and choreographed plan to stop the clamor for independence and self But determined to win their independence, Kenyans defiant the soldiers, resulting in a prolonged bloody revolution war, usually called the Mao. But I must tell you that there are many more Kenyans who are involved in this struggle. And the later emerged in Parliament as comrades that those people were fought to Mamao. And two typical examples 
wajaribuge ogingodinga in jomo kenyatta leaders of the first liberation in this nation thousands of our people were arrested tortured and detained indeed as they were in the oppressive Moi regime subsequently many of them including women died in concentration camps six of those captured by the british were compatriots later named Kapenguria six. They were detained in Okitao in northern Kenya, a very dry and hostile environment. They were jailed and condemned to hard labor for at least seven years. Among the Kapenguria six were our own son from a Rieda constituency, the late Ramugi Achimuniko. Others were Mzeji Mukinata, our first president. Mzee Paul Ngei, Kungu Karumba, Binda Kagea, and Fred Kubai. But we cannot forget our other nationalists, like Tio Dagama Pinto, who died in front of his wife and daughter to an assassin's gunshot on the 24th of February, 1965. Pinto's only crime is that he stood for the liberation of the people of Kenya. Notwithstanding the fact that there was a Kenyan Malaysian ruling in, but liberation had to improve the life for all Kenyans, irrespective of ethnic community, belief, or country of origin. May their souls continue to rest in eternal peace and may their experience and selflessness continue to inspire our youth in particular to defend our hard earned democracy. We are also here to salute many other individuals who have made significant contributions in improving the lives of our people. One of the biggest milestones in Kenya's history, was, which has been achieved since independence, was the enactment of the Constitution of 2010 that gave birth to the revolution. As we salute those who fought for independence, we should also celebrate those who fought for the second generation that culminated in the formulation of the new Constitution that we are enjoying. Besides our hero, the Vimeo Mwan Kenya Lans, Gaila Murundinga, as our leader, there were those like respected constitutional and human rights lawyer, Professor Shadrach Billy Guto, who died in South Africa just a few weeks ago, when he was in exile because the University of Nairobi could not stand to produce ideas for people like ourselves. He died at the prime age of 72. On many occasions, Professor Guto and other scholars like the late Professor Michel Mugu, the late Mukarunga, Professor Nguvi Waithiamu, Professor Michael Shea, the late Dr. Paul Njoni, and a group of other young compatriots and intellectuals including myself, had long discussions on human rights and Kenya's second relation, and how to free Kenya from autocratic one party rule. We followed these discourses with practical action to mobilize the people politically to realize that liberating Kenya for the second time was in their hands. I must say that our access success is epitomized by the second community. Constitution. Although the journey between when we start and when we achieve something is later, later in torture, detention, deaths, road, 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 road accidental. They call them road accident, but we call them road accident. We mobilize our people, especially in the university, to join the struggle for democracy and social progress in Kenya. I request you to have one minute silence in memory of Professor Shadrach Guto.
and other other liberation, liberation heroes and heroines who have died since the initiation of the second liberation movement. Can we stand up for a moment in memory of this Kenya patriots? May the memory be cherished by the people of Kenya. May God Almighty rest their souls in peace. Amen. Fellow Kenyans, why are we celebrating this day? Who is a hero? What should we have for that matter? In a simple definition, a hero is a person who is admired for their strength or courage, outstanding achievement with noble qualities and self Outstanding achievement with noble qualities and self -righteous. On this front, I wish to appeal to our people to pick their leaders and their new heroes, heroes who contribute positively to society and those who want to be so-called leaders by the amount of money they dish out to the people especially during campaigns. We are not just purchasing our people for their rights. We are giving you ideas and policies on how you defend those rights and get social progress and democracy on our account. Let us be Mashuda through service delivery and other outstanding positive achievements in our society. Instead of pursuing political leadership, by purchasing people to sell their democratic rights for a mesh of voting during election. Today, we have several mashujas in our country. Those who fought for independence and mention, those who fought for the second liberation, and those who are going doing good service to our people today. If you are doing good service, that my friend Commissioner was saying, you are a shuja. Wherever you ask, ask yourself, am I contributing positively to the social development of our nation, or am I just accumulating capital? However, I get it. We are happy that the President recently launched a project, a project that his predecessor, Uru Kinata, started and revisited. But now, it is time to make sure that Wananchi recognize this project, which is a, a double heritage, one from Mugai Uru Kinata, and now from Tusili Tuto, who was launched. The launch of the MP Uhuru 2 and other activities that Kenya Shipyard has carried out at the Kisumu port are very positive developments. I therefore salute their leaders for doing this, and we shall recognize them in the Kisumu County as our heroes and give them awards for that. But the port will not serve its purpose as a gateway to East Africa's community countries if the infrastructure feeding it is not improved. I wish therefore to make the following appeal to the national government. One, make the Kisumu Busia Road a dual carriageway. This road is currently very narrow, yet it carries a lot of traffic. Some of which are destined to the port or taking goods from the port. It is the gateway to Busia and to Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, and the Democratic Republic of Kenya. With the road expanded, we shall have two gateways to the East African community. The Kisumu port and we'll see a one-stop water post. Two, I'd like to request his section of the President to extend the standard gate railway to Kisumu, the meter gate railway that we have inherited from Kenya Rivers. That line cannot adequately serve our modern ports. In other words, we're going to have an asset here 
which are we are not using to the maximum. That is not very good economic planning. We therefore appeal to the government to commit more funds to have the standard gauge railway, which is Kisumu. On the UHC, as I have said, our efforts and recommendations were there. And when I read what the president and uh, what the government are doing, I am happy because we did struggle for these things under the coalition. But I think our voices were like voices in the wilderness. Ladies and gentlemen, as Commissioner Hussein has said, we have witnessed rains and storms in the past week, which have caused destruction in parts of the country. I wish to assure the residents of Kisumu, as indeed the commissioners has done, that with the help of the national government and other partners, we have put in place mitigating measures to help reduce the ample impact of the heavy rains. But like Oliver Twist, I will continue to ask the government for more, because the needs are many. The resources in the country are limited. Further, the building of the pools or in Madhupati will help control the waters in the river Nyang. And therefore, during heavy rains, we shall not have people moving from their homes to other places. That dam was built with two purposes. Since 1951, it was suggested in the colonial government to control the flow of water in the river Nyang, but also to provide enough water for irrigation and, and the grow business in the rice belt. We have mapped out potential danger zones in this county, prepared evacuation centers, desilted seasonal rivers, and opened emergency numbers at the county and Red Coast offices for disaster response purposes. We have not worked in isolation. We have worked with the county government, which part of the national government, to ensure that better need than the little young. I also want to encourage our people residing along the riverbanks to make sure that if they are caught unawares, we in the county have built the range of question centers, which from my last experience were enormously oversubscribed and therefore found it very difficult to offer good service to its people. Please help us by taking some initiatives yourself so that we don't have to face danger at the last moment. I also want to urge our people residing in the river banks to make sure that they don't reside in the river bank year in, year out, knowing full well that their future is jeopardized. We will have the proposal of the county commission this list. In the end, however, let us all move to higher ground. By rising above ethnicity and individualism to struggle for democracy and the social progress of our people. The anthem for the East African community says, Umoja wetu ni mwenye. Kwa hivyo, mimi nikependa kuomba watu wa kusumu wote na wakanya kwa jumla. Tafadhali, tujenge taifeletu, bila uka kabila, walu bagusi. Asante sana, happy majusi, mashudani.